we're going to open this morning and we're going to after our uh opening selection we're going to have a uh, uh scripture by minister howard and we're going to ask uh deacon uh ray may if he will give us a prayer and then we will proceed forward to, with another song behind that isn't god good isn't he greatly to be praised hasn't he brought us a mighty long way hasn't he done so much for us uh, he's done so much for me that i cannot tell it all and because of who god is because of what god has done we come into this virtual sanctuary this morning to to give him the glory the honor and the praise we we thank him for all that he has done we thank him for for, for blessing us and we're going to open this morning if you those of you that have your hymnals those of you that have your hymnals or you know the song uh sing with us in your home holy 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 Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, Father God, because it's all about you. 
And Father God, it's not about the four walls of the church, dear Lord, but it's about lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And we come this morning to worship and to praise you. And Father, we give you the glory and we thank you, dear Lord, for the man of God that shall bring the word this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, that for everyone that's under the sound of my voice right now. Father, we pray that God will just bless us through this service, dear Lord, through this virtual service, dear Lord. Bless us through the week. Bless us, dear Lord, on our job. Bless us in our homes. Bless us in our schools. Bless us, dear Lord, even in the midst, dear Lord, of our sickness, dear Lord. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and we thank you for all that you have done. It is in the blessed, matchless name of Jesus the Christ we say amen and amen. We're going to have another song. Uh, uh, Lois is going to delight us with another song. Uh, Sister Edwards, uh, uh, please, if you are able, uh, uh, pull out a song later on for the same before the minister preaches. God bless you. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Yes, God has smiled on me. Has he smiled on you today? Has he been good to you? He woke us this morning and started us on our way. I know we got that extra hour of sleep this morning, but some of us still was a little lazy this morning, a little sluggish, wanting to sleep a little bit longer. But God has been good to us. And somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you for just touching me and just shaking me this morning and allowing me to get out of that sleeping couch. For God has been good. He's been good to me. Even in the midst of my 63 years, when I haven't been good to him, he's been good to me. Even in the midst when I strayed away, he looked beyond all of my faults and saw my needs. He's been good to me. And now he's getting, uh, excuse my language this morning, gooder and gooder every day. Isn't God good this morning? We thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading coming from uh, Minister Verlita Howard, and then we will be followed with that with a prayer by Deacon Ray May. Our scripture will be coming from Ephesians 2, starting at verse 14. For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of the partition between us. Heaven abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained an ordinance. For to make in himself a twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, thereby. And came and preached peace to you, which were for all, 
and them that were not. But through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. I read Ephesians 2, verses 14 through 18, and I know it's sufficient because it is the word of God. Larry the heart, right? Eternal God, which are in heaven. As again, Father God, we come before the throne of grace. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you for last night rest. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up to see another day. And, and Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. We, we realize that, Father God, we can't be in the house. But, Father God, we are so glad that you have made a way with this and you view the praise and the glory. So, Father God, we pray that you bless each and every one on the line to say, Lord, touch us, Father God, in a modern way. So, Father God, we need a word for you in today. Father God, we bless the spirit and the shedding. Bless those that are going through for the reason. So, Father God, let us open our heart so we can receive your word on the day, Lord. Bless the man that he prayed for the word, Lord. So, Father God, we know there is a word for you. And, God, we just want to tell you thank you. Father God, we just give you the praise and the glory. Because we realize that the Father there's nothing we can do without you. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. Father God, we thank you for the 120 years anniversary. Oh God, we just thank you for you just being in the midst of all. And Lord, we ask for all these lessons just so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Deacon May for the prayer. Thank you, Minister Howard, for the scripture. Um, at this time, we're going to uh, see forward. We do polls. We have. Uh, we do acknowledge that today is our 120th uh, church anniversary, and we are not able to be within the house. But we do know that we do have. Um, uh, obligations and you know what we have been asked to do for the church anniversary so if you have not uh, already met that obligation we ask that you will continue to meet that obligation if there are those of you that uh, do not want to hold on to what you have to the third Sunday uh, please be reminded that you may send it to Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church uh, care of Deacon James Knight, uh, the 2137 uh, ENC 124 East Pine Tops, North Carolina, 27864. Again, that is Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, care of Deacon James Knight, 2137 ENC 124 East uh, Pine Tops. North Carolina 27864. Um, please uh, make note that likewise the in-house service was canceled today because of uh, the completion of the renovation that we are doing. Uh, the program for next Sunday, uh, Men at Work, which was scheduled for 3 p.m. next Sunday, has also been uh, canceled, postponed. Uh, to give to make sure that the contractors know that they have time to get everything correct. And we look forward to being back in the sanctuary on um, the third Sunday, well, which will be the 19th of this month. Now, I do, have, do want to say this, that after the contractors are finished and everything is set back in place, um, we may be calling on somebody to come out and help uh, with various items because I know I, I know I just I, I know in my spirit that the contractors are not going to clean it like we would because uh, they don't have the pride in our in our church that we have in our church. So please be reminded that whenever they are finished, that we will be reaching out to uh, for those to come in and assist us to make sure everything is right for uh, us on. Uh, November the 19th as we come back in to the house. Um, 
do we have uh, any announcements from anyone else? I do have the short history. This is the elephant. Go ahead. Madison Chapel Missionary Baptist Church celebrating 120 years, November 2023. In the year of 19, 1903, out on Pitt County's northwest countryside, prayer meetings were held in homes with doors open wide. When a few Christian-hearted folk began to meet and saw the place to plant their feet, they set up in a little wooden shack here just next to Long Branch Creek, Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, where we continue to meet. In no time, this group grew in size. It was then decided to organize. Back then, there were no musical instruments or choirs to sing, but when everyone would lift their voices, great, great joy it would bring. Singing such hymns as Amazing Grace, By and By and Precious Lord, my, oh my, what the Lord would do for we all on one accord. The old wooden shack was destroyed by fire, and the faithful few surely knew. It is no secret what God can and will do if we remain faithful and true. Led by God, the late Albert Redmond and W.A. Anderson had this vision, you see. They were the first deacons, along with Deacon Willie Ross, excuse me, Willie Corbett. They determined it would be. Along with the other faithful members, they continued to do God's will. This property was purchased for $10, where we yet stand still. So they got together in 1940 to build a larger wooden shack, and on every first turn of that shack, no doubt, would be packed. Throughout the years, Minister Albert Knight and Bernita Howard were called to preach and teach. And to that end, there are still souls we are hoping to reach. The late Reverend Henry Noel was the first pastor of this flock. The man likely could not read, but his message traveled throughout the block. Reverend Ed Taylor, Lorenzo Jones, Willie Williams, Neil Brown, Elijah Harris, N.K. Dunn, O.M. James, George Cooper, George Jenkins, James Walston, Chester Frazier, Walter Cherry Jr., and Marty S. Knight also pastored here. Then in 2014, the Lord blessed us with Pastor Malcolm Lewis, Lewis, whose vision is so clear. The first choir was formed in 1934, and the Usher Board was formed in 1940. Some of y'all can remember the late book, which book of tea is his name, Vines and others who served as musicians for many years. My, oh my, he and his piano would bring you to shedding happy tears. Souls were continually saved as time rolled on, just as in the years that were past and gone. And as the congregation continued to expand from a first Sunday to a third Sunday service he gave, not too far away from that first wooden shack, we'll stand and steal at 435 through Anderson Chapel Road today, where the faithful saints continue to gather to serve the Lord with singing and continuing to pray. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and his mercies, they are new every day. And the fruit that lies in this church increases, and for that we give thanks and pray. Yeah. Unless the Lord builds, continues to build this house, we shall surely labor in vain. Unless his spirit comes on down, there is no good we can attain. Dear Heavenly Father, please continue to bless and protect Anderson Chapel Church, we pray. After all, well done is what we want to hear you say. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Trustee Pitt, for that history. It was such a lovely history that was put together. Uh, please, uh, please ensure I get a copy of that. I love that. I would like to have that. Um, and are there any other uh, announcements or remarks on our 120th church anniversary? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, uh, my wife is going to give another uh, selection. And following this selection, I'm going to ask that um, the Deacon uh, David Ricks, if you would uh, lead us in prayer for our stick and shut in. And we just want to acknowledge we're 
so glad to uh, hear that and that Sister Laura Willoughby is doing uh, better and glad to see her joining in with us today. We thank God for bringing her through her procedure. And uh, after Deacon, uh, Deacon Ricks gives us a prayer after the song, I'm going to ask uh, Deacon James Knight if he would uh, present the speaker of the hour and then uh, Sister Olivia Edwards, will you give us a selection? And then the next voice you will hear after that will be that of the Speaker of the Hour, the Pastor of St. Monica Missionary Baptist Church. And anything that Deacon Knight doesn't say about him, he'll fill in. Amen. God bless you. Uh, let us join in with this next song. Precious Lord, take my hand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am one. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me on. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet. Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am one. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Father, we just ask you this morning, Lord, just come in and 
to celebrate with us and celebrate with the sick this morning. Let's, Lord, let's give them the love this morning, Lord, on behalf of your will, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for all your blessings for, for this week and this coming week that you have let us receive. Again, Father God, we want to thank you for your, all your blessings, Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I really appreciate the honor to have this privilege this morning. It, great, it gives me great honor to, to uh, induce, uh, produce the song introduced to others. I, the one and only Reverend J.R. Neal. There's a lot of things I can say about this, this pastor. But I'm going to just tell you about the important thing. Uh, one is you can bring the word. Two, we'll bring the word. And if you give him your amen, uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a glorious time in the Lord. And I say preach, revenue, witness, and the chapel. And the next voice you will hear after the selection will be no other than my friend. My cousin, Reverend J.R. Neal. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Looking back. Oh. And I, I can see. How far I've gone, would I have had some cloudy day? But oh, the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. He stood by me, yeah, who did I think? I can truly say he's been my closest friend. Lord, I know you've been so good to me. You've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good to me. You've been so good, and right now, Lord, I want to thank you, let me thank you, oh, I thank you, Lord, and I just want to thank you, let me thank you, oh, I thank you, Lord, oh, you've been so good. You've been so good, so good. When I was down and couldn't see my way, Lord, you stepped in and you made a way. And I was and couldn't see the light. Lord, you stepped in. Yes, you did. And you made my pathway bright. You stood by me. Yeah. And you stepped in. I can truly say. You've been my closest friend. Lord, I know you've been so good to me. You've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good to me. You've been so good. And right now, Lord, I want to thank you. Let me thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. And I just want to thank you. Let me thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. 
if God builds the house. Um, we all are familiar with the building of a home. We're all familiar with the building of structures and no doubt every one of us, if we've ever had any type of building projects going on in our lives, we will realize that in building, there are also challenges. Um, you have to have measurements right. You, you have to have the right material. You, you have to have the right builders. But overall, you must realize that if you're going to build God's house or, or if you're going to build the house of God, no matter what you have, or no matter the materials or the or, or, or the, the structures or the builders, you must first realize that the most important thing to build in the house of God is the foundation. And, and if you're going to build a strong house of God, and if you're going to have a strong foundation, that's why I said I, I, I love so good about Trustee Nancy Rubens uh, teaching this morning of a Sunday school lesson. The first thing that we must have or the first foundation that we've got to learn how to build on in order for God's house to last, we must build on the foundation of love. Um, we find today that many churches are operating and, 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 and they're flowing with what they call the spirit, but they're not operating in love. And if you're not operating in love, there's no way that your church body can stand. That your structure may stand, but the church itself will not stand because there is no love in the church. There is no love in the structure. Amen. Everything is built on love. When you marry your significant other, you don't marry them because of looks. You don't marry them because of money. You don't marry them for comfortability or anything. You marry them based upon the way that you love them. And if your marriage is not built on love, your marriage cannot stand. That's why the hypnologist said, and if you're going to build on love, that means that you're building this structure on Christ. It means that you're building this structure on God. That's why the hypnologist made the song saying, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame I know, but wholly leaning on Jesus' name, on Christ of solid rock. I stand when all of the grounds are sinking sand on Christ, the solid rock I stand. If you're not building on love, if you're not structured on love, your house will not be able to stand because your house will face great opposition due to division, uh, uh, lack, and the ability of God will not be able to flow freely because there is no sure foundation. So this morning, as we look at the book of Israel this morning, we find that we find a story that is filled with faith and hope. And it's also a story that expresses the devotion and faithfulness of God's people. You must know that if you're going to be God's church, that you must first be a faithful people. Not just faithful, but you must have a hope. And I just talked about that of God's people. And we look at the story, we see um, at this time now where King Nebuchadnezzar he has held the Jews captive in Babylon uh, for some 70 years in the temple uh, that was at Jerusalem, uh, fell into great despair. King Nebuchadnezzar and the armies, they began to raid the temple and they stole everything that was of value. And, and they would look at it, all of the vessels were made gold and silver and the temple, uh, Nebuchadnezzar placed them in the temple of his of his heathen gods, uh, meaning that Nehemiah, not Nehemiah, Nebuchadnezzar, he came in and he took everything that was of value and he placed it in his temple. His temple was not the temple of God. His temple was not the house of God, but it was a man-made place with a man-made God that they thought or they expected to overreign the God that we serve. But I came to tell you this morning, I don't care who you got, who you serve, how strong they are, how great you think they are, there's nobody greater than God Jehovah. There's nobody greater than the God that we serve. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was soon find this out because now after Nebuchadnezzar kingship has ended, now you have a king uh, by the name of Cyrus. Cyrus now became the king. And then after Cyrus became the king, he allowed the Jews who uh, so desired to turn to their, to return to their homeland. Cyrus, how many people know that whenever the enemy comes and 
He tries to captivate you or hold you in a place where you do not want to be or try to suppress the work of God, that God always has somebody, watch this, that may not believe what you believe and may not think like you think and may not even worship the God that you worship. But watch this, God will allow them to know because oftentimes God will place the know-how in their mind or place spirit to show them that even though I don't follow the believers, even though I don't follow the teachings, I must let these people go. Meaning, when you are a kingdom-minded person, when you are a kingdom-minded body, when you are a kingdom-minded set of people, amen, God will send somebody that don't believe like you, but they'll have enough sense to know that these are the people, the true and living God, and I've got to release them because I can't hold on to them because I can't stop the work that God is doing through them. The enemy, he realizes that he cannot stop the work that God is trying to do through Addison Chapel 120 years now. No doubt the enemy, he came in and he's tried to set so many types of discord and so much adversity, and he's still right now trying to drive a wedge between the church, but I come through the authority and the power of Jesus Christ to tell you that God is still building this house, and because God is still building this house, God is still in control of this house, and he's still the head of this house, and this house will continue to prosper because God is in the midst of it. So now they return to their homeland, and he gave them permission to rebuild their temple at Jerusalem, meaning that he knew that he, they needed somewhere to worship because he knew they didn't worship what they worship. Well, they didn't believe what he, what he and the rest of the Babylonians believed, so he gave them permission to rebuild their temple at their home place in Jerusalem. And when he went so far as they issued a decree, a man that he would contribute to the project to return all of their stolen vessels. Meaning, a man, if we look at the story where God, he even softened the heart of Cyrus when he said, if you're going to rebuild the temple, I will give you back the things of your own because it's no good in my temple, but it's still good in your temple. Out of the chapel, I came to tell you this morning that God is going to restore some years. He's going to restore some of the things that the enemy thought he's taken away from you and he's going to rebuild you back the proper way. And the things that the enemy are holding on to, they're trying to keep away from you and this body. God is going to release them so that the enemy have to return them to you. And I came to tell you this morning that when good people set out to do good work, you can rest assured that adversity will always come to earth. And in the my, um in the shadows, there's always somebody. As we use it after Americans, we love the term, there's always somebody seeking to throw a monkey wrench in the plans of God. Now, you must be, uh, such was the case because, see, now, uh, with the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, uh, they had a leader who placed in charge of a building project and the enemies tried everything they could to slow down the rebuilding of the temple that they asked their leader uh, of the Jews at this time for permission to help with the project, saying that they were seeking to worship the same God. You will find that in Israel, chapter 2, chapter 4, verse number 2. When the Jews denied them access, they hired counselors to write accusations against all of the Jews of Judah and of Jerusalem to present it to the king. So they were trying to stop the work of God. And they warned the king that the Jews were allowed to proceed uh, rebuilding their temple, that they would refuse to pay their taxes to King Cyrus. And, and they would choose seduction over obedience. And, and, and by all of their attempts, amen, to try to stop the rebuilding of the temple, they were still unsuccessful. The king, again, Cyrus, he realized that I cannot stop what God has placed his hands on and all of them were accompanying. Amen. They tried to slow them down for 15 years. We want to tell somebody sitting next to you on this morning that God always has a counter plan when the enemy tries to stop his plan. A new king replaced Cyrus and uh, there was a new king who entered by the name of Darius the Great. Now, I, I don't know, amen, why well, so many historians call King Darius the Great, amen, but I came to tell you there's no one great but God of Jehovah. There's no one great but the God that we serve. But Judas adversities uh, tried the same tactics with uh, King Darius. They, they, they tried to tell King Darius the same thing. There was a governor by the name of Hatani who accomplished some things. And there was a governor by the name of Tatanai who tried to stop and 
so Darius, he ordered to review the books of the predecessors. And, and as we look at it, amen, he found that Cyrus, he indeed had given the blessings to the project, including the money and the supplies. So much humiliation of the enemies of the Jews because Darius doubled down in commitment and gave the Jews more help than they had before. See, that's why the enemy must be careful when he tries to stop the work of God, because oftentimes when he tries to stop the work of God, God will allow somebody to give you even more than you expected. Because see, now King Darius, when he looks back and he sees what King Cyrus has already done, he decides that, look, I'm not just going to give them what has already been stolen from them, but I'm going to give them more than what they already had to construct this temple. And, 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 and this temple was completed in the sixth year of King Darius. Now, when we look at our text on this morning, uh, there's a couple of things that jumps out at me in the text. And, and if I may, just give you three little points and get out of your way on this morning. The first thing that we must understand that goes on here in this story is God is watching the enemies of the church. Um, God is watching the enemies of Anderson Chapel. Somebody didn't want Anderson to even start this renovating project. Somebody tried to stop the renovating project. And I walk here and here. I'm in the water. I'm at where she's swimming now. There's some members in Anderson Chapel right now that tried to stop the project. There's some members in Anderson Chapel right now that don't want to see the project go forward. But I came to tell you that the project is going forth and God is in the midst of it. And if you're not going to walk with the church, if you're not going to stand with the church, if you're not going to follow the assignment of the vision for the church, I came to tell you it's time for you to leave the church and move on and be where you can do your own thing because God is watching watching the enemies of the church. Now getting back to the text, amen, while all eyes uh, at this time was upon Tatanai and the accomplice, uh, the accomplice, amen, the word says that the eye of God was upon the leaders of the Jews. Uh, we often say it, and, and it is really true that God sits high and he looks low, because all while Tatanai was drumming up lies and working his mischief and and trying to uh, encourage them to stop the building, uh, he sent a uh, uh, prophet by, the, by uh, Haggai and, and Zechariah to encourage the Jews who were truly God's people and on the Lord's side to encourage them to continue to move forward and build. And Allison, I came to tell you this morning as a mouthpiece of God, I came to, to encourage you, amen, and to let you know that you got to continue to move forth and build. Uh, the building does not stop here at the renovations, but you must build in love. You must build in worship. You must build in praise. You must continue to move forward, not just not just stop here because God helped walk with you. Uh, God, he's always aware of of every move that the enemy makes, God, he watches everyone who would oppose the work of his church. It is impossible uh, for anybody to escape the eye of God because he's uh, omniscient. Uh, it's impossible to escape his eagle eye. Um, and while they were foolishly attacking the church, the church stand, amen, God was still giving the church divine response. He was still orchestrating something that was greater than the enemies that were trying to stop the build of what God was doing. At times, it seems as though that we are um, making time, we are marking time against the enemy of the church, but there is no earthly match for the watchful eye of God. I, I wish somebody would help me through here. Uh, but God, he does not just watch our enemies, but God, he watches us. His look casts his light upon us. His look reflects his love upon us. His look affirms his help upon us. And his look inspires our trust. And, and all the while, the enemies of Jerusalem had plotted and made schemes to work their evil, uh, the Jews kept their eyes on God. I came to tell you, Anderson, no matter who tries to stop you or no matter what they do to stop you, don't keep your eye on the enemy, nor the discord, but keep your eyes on God because the project continued and, and nothing stopped it from moving forward. And as we look at it, amen, as we look at it, amen, there as uh, the 21st century, there were caretakers of the 21st century church and, and Jesus Christ uh, is up to the eyes, excuse me, it's up for us to keep 
by our eyes on a church that's focused on God. We, we too must never yield to the enemy. We cannot take our eyes off God because I think it was Paul that wrote in Romans chapter number eight or thirty number one. He said, "If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, I didn't say him." The pastor be for us, the deacon be for us, God be for us, who can be against us, and nothing can stop the work and the will of God when he's for us. Um, the second thing that stands out in the text on this morning is uh, God will defeat the enemies of the church. God will defeat the enemies of the church. Now, we see here that King Darius told Tatiana, the governor, over all the land around Jerusalem, he said, let the work of the house of God alone. The king told the enemy to leave, and to put it into an hour terms, leave the church alone. That, that, that's all the text was saying. In other words, King Darius was saying to Captain I back off because the Jews had every right to continue their work, even in the face of the governor's challenge. Uh, God's providence proved to sustain the work of his temple, despite the hostility around them, it brings to mind a familiar saying. You know, we, we got a familiar saying, amen, that came from the 1950s of an R&B era where it said, one monkey don't stop no show. And in fact, those words are common African-American expressions, which truly means, in, in layman terms, that one setback should not appease progress. I came to tell you this morning, amen, there might be one monkey, there might be two monkeys, but there, no matter how many they are, nobody can stop the show. I, I think on the song of the secular world, some of you know it, some of you don't, but it said this train going to keep on rolling, and this thing called life going to keep on going. One monkey don't stop no show. Uh, so we find that, that, that no matter, amen, when God has our enemies in his sight line, nothing can impede our progress. Uh, the Lord himself confirmed this through the prophet Isaiah saying that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment shall be contained for them. Meaning also that not only will the weapon not form, that everybody that put their mouth on Anderson Chapel, everybody that said Anderson Chapel would not make it, everybody that said Anderson Chapel would not be able to sustain, God did not just uh, catch them trying to throw weapons, but God heard their words. And because of their words, God, he will condemn the very tongue of the people that speak against you. But be careful how you speak against God. Church, I wish I had a witness here. I'm preaching hard as I can. And God, He uses every opportunity to slow down the assault of the enemy. He restrains man uh, so you, you can move ahead with the plan of God. And we don't have to concern ourselves with the attack uh, from the left and the right, like workhorse, amen, in the field. We just need to put on our spiritual blinders and press forward with a persistent spirit. We got to learn how to press forward, what I said, with a persistent, persistent spirit. And say what Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me, but pressing forward towards the high, the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We got to learn how to forget about what is behind us and go forward because we're guided by the hand of God. And all we need to concern ourselves with is the work of the church and, and the church of, and the work of the church is simply to attract sinners and amen to cultivate holiness and to advance spirituality amen to inspire devotion to unite believers and dissolve differences and encourage faithfulness and arouse workers and offer hope uh, third and final thing that we're going to wrap this message up right here the third and final thing that we find in our text on this morning is God may use anyone to complete his master plan for his church I wish I had Prayer church, I don't care. God don't care. You know the song said, God can use anybody whom he pleases. And, and you got to be that anybody. You know, you got to be that one out door. If I got to go by myself, if I have to do this thing alone and nobody else want to walk with me or help me, uh, we see here that God would oftentimes, uh, he will surprise us with help from an unexpected source. Now, although uh, the kings, they, 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 they've helped uh Cyrus and Darius, they have helped. Uh, but yeah, we look at the text and we will see that he did it for the Jews of Jerusalem because God raised up a Cyrus to commit his work and he raised up a Darius to converse his work uh, and to complete it. Amen. But neither of them worshiped the one and true living God. I, I, I had a witness there earlier. Uh, neither one 
them worship the God that the Jews worship, but God compelled them to serve him without their knowledge. I wish I had. See, oftentimes the enemy, they think they're going against God, but they're really walking with God. God, he compelled them. I got to say the thing again because somebody missed what I was saying. God, he compelled them to serve him without their knowledge. He, he used their worldly desires and domination to control a desirable response with his masterpiece. So see, truth of the matter is, they knew that they did not worship God, but watch this, they thought that because they were given the authority, the natural authority, they thought because they were given the authority to continue to feel that the temple was coming up through and by them, but they did not realize that God was using them, Lord, help me on the ghost. God was using them, he was making them feel like they were in charge so that they may continue to give his people sight that they may continue to give his people hope that he may continue to give the people faith and get the job done oh, i came to see if god builds the church no one can stop this church and the kings uh they were within the realm of god's providence so uh the governors and the mayors and the councilmen and everyday citizens we are all under the watchful eye of god and and the Lord is still using unexpected sources to advance his work today. He uses taxes and government spending to ease the burdens of the poor. He uses temporal uh, worldly people uh, to aid mankind around the globe. He used secular charities to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked. Uh, there is one job that the Lord gives his followers, and, and it's one job that he gives us his, his workmanship, and that is to spread the gospel. He cannot entrust the work to spread the gospel with anybody. I always uh, wish I had somebody praying for this morning, but it is the church, it is the bride of Christ that is charged to do the work of evangelism. Uh, she has the task of penetrating the word of the world of Christ, and she has the light of the world, and, and she has alone carries the weight, amen, of a sacred responsibility to, to, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Only she can infiltrate the word of God. Only she can reveal, amen, the word of God. Only she can eradicate the presence of God. Only the church can shine with righteousness of God. Only the church can glow with the glory of God. Only the church can reflect with the image of God. Only the church can spotlight the Son of God. Only the church can illuminate the will of God. If God fills this house, no weapon that falls against this church shall be able to prosper. No threat will cause uh, his side steps of his ministry. No intimidation will charge his message. No intimidation will change the message of Christ. And no assault will cause her demise. And the church, she will prosper, amen, in spite of persecution. The church, amen, she will advance in spite of adversity. The church will grow in spite of difficulties. The church will triumph in spite of criticism. The church will, amen, will minister in spite of defects. The church will continue because God's church, because it is God's church. And I came to tell my day, if God has built this house, if, if God has built in this Anderson Chapel, if God is in that chapel, it is ordained by God, and it's established by God, and it is justified by God, and it's sanctified by God, and it's equipped by God, and offended by God. I wish somebody would help me close this little message and get out of the way. Amen. So we all must continue to glorify God on this morning. I came to tell you this morning, as a chapel, I'm done with the message, but can I just testify about how good God
to do anything.
they the labor or the labor in vain. So we thanking God for the continued mission of the Anderson Chapel. We thank God for continuing to bless us and move us forward. And even in the midst of this setback, this setback, it's just God setting us up for higher because we have come together this day, lifting up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the wonderful thing about it is, it's not about numbers. It's not about how many you have, but it's about how many that are working. We thank God for the workers in the vineyard. Amen. Amen. So Pastor Neil, we, again, we thank you for being your beauty this morning and coming and sharing with the word this morning. We thank those of you that shared with the scripture, those that shared with the prayers, those that, uh, the uh, uh, trustee uh, the, the pit for the history, uh, for the, the ninth of the introduction, and for everything that has taken place during this setting. Now, Pastor Neil extended the invitation, and uh, if we was in the house uh, this morning, we would stand and say, if those, there are those that desire prayer, if there are those this morning that's been touched mightily, and you just want to acknowledge that the Lord has touched you this morning, or you just want to acknowledge, Lord, I need you more, I need prayer, we're just going to pause and give you that opportunity because we can't vis we can't visually see you, but we can audibly hear you. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. I know uh, I did. I don't have to take a long time. I'm not, and I may somebody may say, "Well, I was getting ready to say something." He started back talking. Let me tell you something. Something happened with me on Friday, Friday evening. I was in, I was in the house all by myself, and I got a response for from an email on a problem that I was having to deal with. And the email, the response in the email was uh, my favor, and I know within my favor that it was God that was moving. And in the midst of this house, all by myself. I had to put on a praise party just by myself because when God has done something for you, guess what? You don't need anybody around to see what your child's all about. But you just shout anyway because knowing it was the goodness of God that has done it. So we thank God for all that he has done. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Uh, if there's if there's nothing else, if there's nothing else to draw our attention as a reminder, uh, the program for the second Sunday, uh, is the November the 12th at 3 p.m., uh, men at work has been, uh, council postponed and they were, they were, the men will be getting back to us on that. We do look forward to being back in the house on, uh, November the 19th at 11 a.m. for our service. Please come out and, uh, celebrate with us. And as we mentioned earlier, please be prepared to, if needed, called upon to help us uh, do a little cleanup after the uh, uh, contractors have finished. Pastor Neil, again, God bless you. And I believe we may have had one or two members of uh, Monica, uh, St. Monica with us this morning. We thank all the guests, everybody that have joined in with us this morning. We praise God for you taking this time and sharing with us. And now we're going to turn it back over to uh, Pastor Neil. Uh, and uh, I have to say this, uh, uh, Pastor, one day I was, I was telling, uh, I said, we're going to have with us uh, Pastor J.R. Reed. Somebody say Neil. I say, yeah, I'm thinking basketball right now. Yeah, J.R. Neil. Pastor Neil is going to give us our benediction. Amen to God for the glory for and all to say for the wonderful things that he has done and he's currently going out of the chapel. Pastor Lewis, again, I thank you all for the opportunity to even consider me to be able to share my convictions of Christ with you all on such a joyous occasion on this morning. As I said, that we're not in the building, but we realize that the church is still further than the building. And true yeah. ministry, not the church, but true ministry is witness, evangelism. So we, we, we're doing what God commissioned us to do because we're reaching more than just the house. I say to the St. Monica that came to this morning, I thank you all. I say you all, I love each other. One of you, I love Anderson. Um, thank you, Deacon Knight, for such a wonderful introduction. Um, 
and all of you all, I'm just excited to be a part of this history making. And also, before we close, uh, I just want to invite you all that the second Sunday in, in December, uh, second Sunday in December, which is coming up very soon next month, that'll be the I guess the 12th of the 10th, this year, the second Sunday, the 10th, uh, St. Monica, we will be reserving our 126th church anniversary um, on that evening at 4 p.m. Um, Pastor, he's a pine shop, will be with us, and he's very much for the invite to come help us celebrate um, our church anniversary. We would love to see you all there. If you can't make it, we ask you to pray for us. There's none of us thank my intention. Let us pray, Father, the heavens again. And once more, God, to thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit, God, to still open the midst of us once more again. God, to thank you for doing what you always do. And as rain and pour out your blessings upon us and your spirit. God, we thank you for everyone that was here for the service on this morning. God, who came to be blessed. And God, who came to be then they are portion, God, to help lift up your name. God, we thank you for 120 years of this church. God, we pray they continue to stand another 120 years. God, they will continue, God, to go forward. God, even after we have already gone, God, this church continue to grow, God, and move forward in you. And God, and do continue to carry out the will and the work in your name. God, we ask now we will continue to strengthen the leader. God, strengthen the people. God, stand behind the leader in the vision. God bless them, God, and keep them like only you can. Now, God, may the peace of the Lord, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, rest with the Bible, with us henceforth now and forevermore. And all God's children say, Amen. 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 Thank you again, each of you, for taking the time to join in with us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and have a blessed day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.